Welcome to Alien Theorist Theorizing Case File 273, The Guardian UFO Cursed Episode. Um, let's see if we can get through this one today. I'm Braden. I'm Zelt. I'm Dan. And I'm Andrew. Yeah, it's been a f- couple weeks trying. Check around. I think we're okay. Still going. You know, you, know what's, you know what's you know what's fucking super weird about this? Literally, right as we started this, my one light turned green. But as soon as you push I record, a, as soon as we push record, my one overhead light went green. I was like, "That's weird." What color is it? I've is it tr- normally? Uh, like skin tone color. Mm, at least it didn't go skin red. Skin tone color. <laughs> what? Well, you know, he's like trying. He's trying. Dark line. fine he's skin trying to, tone color. He's trying to bronze I feel like himself. That's not this color oh. is the light it's like pasty white there's yeah. a lot of different skin tones man right well see how zell's color is zell's color is like a that's a white light on zell like look at him right? no they're oh, not quite what they're, they're an off-white yeah um before we get going on this one because it's a really interesting case but it did, I, they did kind of give me some parallels to like other things we've talked about and one of the things that i wanted to bring up first so it's kind of in your guys' mind as we go through this did this guy did this kind of case give you some parallels to like bob lazar right at all like did you guys think that because like if you remember like would like if you don't know who bob lazar is rewind uh back a couple case files get your head out of your ass uh but he right he's the one the whistleblower on area 51 s4 we wouldn't really know about it or as much as we know about it if it wasn't for him coming out and and exposing it but one of the things that he did is he would take remember when he would take people you know he would say he would when they were test flying these crafts he would take people up on the ridge line to watch right he would bring like hey they're gonna fly one tonight right uh let's go watch this thing right just when you start to get into the guardian like like him whistleblowing this kind of stuff gave me that same kind of feel like if it's as if he was some sort of like canadian bob lazar it's a lot less like the Bob Lazar case is a lot less cloak and dagger though. Yeah, we don't even know who the, this guy was really. Yeah, like yeah, Guardian's think, pretty like fucking hip hop anonymous man. Like but he doesn't he want was, to so, know But who so he was is. Bob Lazar. So was Bob Lazar. If you remember, he came out first. I, but he went on the uh, world's his, biggest podcast. N- <laughs> like, not at first. Not at first though. When he first came out, he he went by uh, the name Dennis. I think it was Dennis. He had his face blurred. Yeah, he had an and alias. Then because yep. Because they, be, he was worried his life was in, j- in danger because they had found him out. So he came, pu- he came out in public because he was like, if I say all this stuff with my name and then they kill me or something happens to me, they're going to be on the hook, right? They're going to, people are going to know that's what's happened, right? So he, he felt coming forward with his real name and stuff was a way to protect himself because he had been burned. Like they already knew it was him. So he kind of like got ahead of it by coming out and saying this. So I kind of wonder with the guardian, if this is just a case of like a whistleblower where he didn't get that, like they were truly like, didn't know who this was. So you, whoever gave this was safe other than, you know, we'll get into it later, but they did leave a thumbprint. Well, I mean, I'll give my judgment after we go through the whole case, but yeah, you're, I guess in that in a very, in a, a little bit, I guess, is that what you're looking for? A little bit of Bob Lazar. <laughs> I don't need you to just agree with that, but that's what, when I was thinking, when I was, when we were going through this case, I just kept thinking about that of like, this is, this is similarities to that. Like, I wonder if this is, if whoever this was knew, knew about this stuff. But anyways, let's, let's get into the Gordian. Gordian. So in 1989, uh, Tom Theophanis was a UFO researcher who was working with the Canadian UFO Research Network or QFORN. Um, is that still around? Is QFORN even still around? Or have they all kind of got absorbed by MUFON? I think they're all yeah, MUFON. they're just Canadian wings of MUFON. Because there's like the yeah. Toronto-based yeah. MUFON was in on this, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, re- he received an anonymous package uh, from someone who is calling themselves Guardian. It didn't have any return address on it or anything. It pretty much just said like to, you know, to Tom the office, the office of whatever. And... This package apparently contained a story, like a printed out story, um, that was regarding a UFO crash that allegedly occurred close to Carlton Place, uh, which is about a half hour drive from Ottawa. Um, And then uh, to 
kind of back up that story. He had a couple of uh, like photocopied images, and one of those he said looked very much like uh, your classic kind of gray, like a like a very blurry but um, a far away picture taken of what could have been an actual extraterrestrial. Um, the story the story that's included in the thing is. Uh, it's wild. <laughs> like I can't, there's no other real word uh, for me to kind of describe it. Um, the the story great. goes into talking about, uh, <laughs> I, I won't read the whole thing, but pretty much the salient points are that uh, there was on the November 4th, 1989 at eight, <laughs> at, 20 hours Canadian Defense Department radars picked up a globe-shaped object traveling at phenomenal speed over Carp, Ontario. Um, apparently, the UFO stopped and then dropped like a stone. And then after that, there was a major recovery operation dispatched, uh, which included apparently uh, some AH-64 Apaches and UH-60 Blackhawks. And I didn't was... even know we had this in Canada. <laughs> well, it was a combination it's of joint uh, task force, buddy. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and when we say joint task force our men were all on the ground right yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. yeah. we were the boots on the ground in that joint task force the joint task force though right are red china iraq and canada which you know very likely allies <laughs> Uh, so now these these Apache gunships and, and whatever apparently uh, fired on this UFO and they used uh, missiles that carried a, a deadly neuroactive gas, uh, which is referred to in the uh, in the letter as Vexon, V-E-X-X-O-N, um, and is supposed to have, you know, kill on contact. And then... Um, yeah, so uh, there's that, and then these uh, Are they those the like green hog... balls <laughs> from the rock. Uh, yeah, Nicholas Cage was on hand to, uh, to 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 supervise the the recovery, I suppose. And then um, uh, the UH-60 landed. Uh, it, it dispatched, uh, you know, it dispatched its its task force of men coming down in there to to go into this recovery of this craft um apparently there were humanoids uh which is the, these photos uh that were included inside the package uh were taken of these things how these how this guardian got these photos um they're not really sure like whether these were well, taken he had to be by, on the inside had to be on the right inside. so well, either, he had to be he had to be one of the boots on the ground the pictures. right had to right he was, yeah, he he was, had in, to the, he was in the area Listen, Everyone knows if you're photocopying something, who has a photocopy? No one. Someone in government, right? So we know it's an insider just by that because if you have a government job, you are basically just at a, you know, a stationary store where you all do all your photocopying, all your printing. No one who works for government owns their own printer or photocopier. You right? steal it. No one. You, you steal, steal that it. ink. You do it all. So like 100%, this guy is an insider because who else was he going to Staples, right? With this stuff? No. <laughs> Kinkos. He's doing it at work. Kinkos. <laughs> uh so uh, apparently the, the salt uh, eliminated the non-terrestrial entities or ntes as the letter refers to them and these were reptilian they were described as reptilian fetus headed beings um listed as class one according to this uh guardian who seems to be some sort of Sorry, you familiar said with the terminal yeah so, so, that's what so the I'm letter thinking, says that's what I'm it refers some to them sort as. of like nagini right like on the back of the head kind of thing <laughs> Um, fetus head, <laughs> or maybe they're just like a little fetus controlling the lizard body. Oh, I like that. Uh, a little Modoc on top. <laughs> um, the bodies of these the bodies of these creatures were apparently recovered, and then they were packed in ice, and then shipped over to a uh, isolation chamber within the University of Ottawa, where CIA CIA physiologists performed their autopsies. CIA the performed the autopsies in Canada. Uh, the, yes, according to this letter, yes. Okay. <laughs> and then the um, uh, apparently they used uh, uh, it was the again parts. it was a, you're, Del, you're you're mistaken, right? Everyone knows the top, the most top secret Canadian organization is also the CIA. It's C I A E H. Okay, gotcha. Right? Yeah, C I E H, and they right. they've named it that way to throw off people like you when you go there. <laughs> what the CIA was here? I don't think so. <laughs> Fake news. But really, it's the CIA. <laughs> That checks out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, uh, now the parts and in the. Uh, and hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut, 
and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.